making up the difference, making up the difference, catch it. digit billions and who would say triple digit billions it is triple digits in 2017 the industry was over 500 billion today's estimates are about 600 billion and let's say you spend 30 minutes on hair and makeup every day over a year that is 182 hours or four weeks of paid vacation <laughs> over a lifetime that is 14 months just imagine over a year of sitting at this table. So why do when they do this? One reason is because it matters. A 2006 study found that participants were more likely to award prestigious jobs to women who were made up than to the same women when their faces were unadorned. Now maybe you're thinking, 2006 was 13 years ago. Maybe we're more woke. <laughs> <laughs> well, a 2016 study compared actual earnings and found that attractive people earn 20% more than people of average attractiveness. And for women, unlike the men, makeup explained all of the attractiveness factor. Because <laughs> 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 keep in mind, everyday makeup is actually a new human practice, only 100 years old, but it's already reset our expectations of what we look like. I caught myself doing this once. I was looking at a coworker of mine, Andrea, and thinking, wow, she, really tired today until I realized she, she wasn't wearing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but on most days, this makeup tax is what Andrea and many women pay in their time, in their money, in their attention to make up the difference between reality and expectation. Now what I want to know is what can we do? Because I really want to sleep in. <laughs> Perhaps we could expect men to wear makeup. <laughs> at least we could spend our 14 months here at the table together. But even here, makeup is a double-edged sword. A friend of mine who works in science said that wearing makeup caused her peers to see her with less credibility. She wasn't imagining it. A 2016 study found that more attractive or more feminine-looking women were judged to be less likely to be scientists. And are you looking to be a woman in leadership? Or do you work for women in leadership? A study from just last year found that makeup for a social night out had a negative effect on the perceptions of women's leadership ability. This reminded me of a friend of mine who moved here from the East Coast and found that a bright lip color is so uncommon in the Bay Area that she had stopped using her favorite red lipstick. This is a really difficult question to answer. Even one of our most prominent female figures didn't have a reply on hand for this. Four years ago, Hillary Clinton was asked about the makeup tax. How does she manage getting ready in the morning while getting ready for the real work of the day? She didn't quite answer. She said, if I can try to remember, she says, amen, sister. You're preaching to the choir. It's a daily challenge. I do the best I can, and as you may have noticed, some days are better than others. <laughs> But what I learned during my research is Hillary was forced to a decision several decades ago. Some of you may know this Hillary, a makeup-free, giant, glasses-wearing woman who kept her maiden name. But after her husband Bill lost the 1980 re-election, 
she changed her look. She got contact lenses. She changed her hair. She changed her name. The lawyer Hillary Rodham became Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now I know when someone makes big changes like this, that she has big opinions on the matter, and I wanted to hear them. But I also know that the bold and blunt answer she used to give <coughs> disappeared along with this story. After years of nitpicking and out of context quotes, her public response style became a lot like her appearance. Calculated, overly cautious, carefully worded. As for me, I was saying farewell <laughs> to my mornings of sleeping in. When the speech brought me a couple inspirations. Clinton dodged the fake up question four years ago, but she has slightly different answers since then. She has posed for makeup free photos with friends, friends, fans, thank you. <laughs> and she has given speeches while wearing minimal makeup. And these are not mistakes, they are conscious decisions. So these confirm to me it's important to continue with your makeup free days. But other parts of this journey taught me makeup isn't just about conforming or more cash in the bank account. It's about self-expression and having fun. Something I need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> but I still really want to reset our expectations, and I need your help to do that. So the next time you see someone who looks a bit tired, a bit plain, remember, that's what we all really look like. <laughs> Tomorrow I can demonstrate it to you. <laughs> or the next time you see someone who looks really made up, think of that as someone, the, the face of someone who makes billion dollar decisions. Billion dollars. <laughs> because only together are we going to remove this artificial gap so that none of us should need to make up that difference. Thank you.